You just pop your hands on top of your head for me, it just makes it a lot easier. Road Wars follows an elite unit from the Thames Valley Police. Police officers! Stand fast! Stay where you are! Go. Tackling serious crime across the area, the 20-strong team face a daily diet of drugs, burglaries and pursuits. Using high-performance unmarked cars equipped with the latest technology, the two-man crews of the proactive team are the front line against the crooks. Anything can happen police in the streets, and in road wars, the unexpected is always just around the corner. It's half nine Friday morning in Reading. The proactive team are experts at dealing with dangerous and violent criminals. Today, two of the team, Rosie Vosser and Darren Staley, Daz, have been called in to nick two blokes who are behind an armed robbery. The intelligence suggests they could possibly uh, have a gun on them, so uh, we want to move rather swiftly in, uh, and not give them uh, too much time to react to us. So, yeah, we'll go in quite hard. Uh, and, um, and hopefully it'll be a, a good end to it and none of us are going to get hurt or shot would be ideal. What well, ideal if we get shot? Because <laughs> we don't get shot, you pillock. <laughs> with a potentially long wait in store, the pair sit up with a local unit and kill some time. I spy with my little eye something beginning with... S. Sky. Nope. Sky dish. Oh, yeah, good lot. <laughs> <laughs> something beginning with N. 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 Net curtain. An hour later, one of the men they're waiting for is seen leaving the flat and the team strike. Go on, go on. But spotting the cops, the geezer runs back into the flats. Go on. Let me out, let me out, Rose. Wait, 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 wait. He's into. Go. Stop there! Do not move. Right Put your hands oh, on your head. Get, get on the floor. Now, get on the floor, turn over. You're nicked. I've got nothing on Get your legs down, legs down. Get roll over onto your front, guys. roll onto your front. Arms behind your back. Arms behind your back. Arms behind your back. Arms behind your back, son. Arms behind your back. Hinder off, 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 off. Who is it? What's his name? We're just going to search you, OK? Once we search you, we'll sit you up on your ass, all right? Listen, I don't know what the fuck you are thinking here. I've, I, I, I told you, yeah, well, why are you arresting me for? I told you my name and that you think I'm gonna think. Okay. I'm on license. I'm, I haven't committed a crime. Yes, yes, I am. My is my real name. Right. Okay. Yeah. My first name. Calm down. Right. Just talk normally. One bloke down and no sign of a gun, so the team go knocking for the second suspect. With a firearm potentially behind the door, getting in quickly is vital. It's the police. Yep, yeah, open the door. Open the I door open now. Open the door, please! Open the door and kick the door in now. Do it now! Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Why are you just out of there? Put your hands behind your back. Cuffs, cuffs. Have some cuffs, please. Right, you're under arrest and suspicion of robbery. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention one question. Something we see later on in court. Anything you say may be given in evidence. Officer, what is this robbery meant to be? Right, we'll explain everything to you when we get down to the police station. You have your rights and entitlements given to you, and then we'll talk to you. Okay, okay if we just put your legs down flat again, we'll roll you onto your stomach. Oh. We're going to roll you the other way as well, okay? Oh. This is a mad. I've never been arrested like this for fucking before. This is killing me, man. You're also under arrest for possession of cannabis, all right? Okay, okay. Oh, where the fuck have you got this information from? I've got, I've got to go and pray in an hour and you take me to the police station. Yeah, that's right. With the second bloke nicked, the search of the flat turns up a few surprises, including body armour. Ballistic vest. What would you want one of them for? You've got to be asking why's he got that. Oh, he's got two. <laughs> oh, bugger. On top of the ballistic vests, the team also found Class A drugs, but worryingly, no gun. Both blokes were arrested for robbery, but with no evidence, they were later released without charge. The drugs found by Daz were destroyed.
Posh jewellery shops with pricey displays are a favourite target for smash and grab crooks. In Royal Leamington Spa, CCTV operators have alerted the police to a bloke breaking into a jeweller's window. What officers don't know is he's got an axe and he's prepared to use it. Incredibly, the bloke pounds the police car, smashing the windows. A second officer races in, armed with his CS gas and baton. But this doesn't stop the angry axeman giving the police siren a final scene to. Not fancying a face full of baton, the bloke retreats. If it hadn't been for the brave actions of one officer, things could have been a lot more serious than one damaged cop car. When criminals flee cops, they'll often use anything as a weapon to help them escape. In Reading, two of the proactive team, Pete Lloyd and Jim Mahoney, Tango Victor 3-6, are on the tail of three robbers who just screwed a house in Swindon. It seems they're not too keen to be caught with their loot. Hammering through country lanes, one of the passengers lobs out what looks like a silver box. In fact, it's a stolen DVD player. Tango Victor 3-6 with South Stoke Road, heading south following a stolen vehicle. Both officers are pursuing management trained. The vehicle is still fighting to stop. Ten seconds later, out comes a PlayStation 2, which ends up under the police wheels. Lots of debris coming out of the car. Uh, speed uh, 70 miles an hour. Tango Big 36. Uh, I believe we're heading towards Reading. We've got more debris coming out of the car at us. These three burglars have had a busy night, as out comes a third plundered item. This time it's the control pads and leads for the PlayStation. Now the bungling burglars try a different tactic to escape. Oh, it's three up. Oh, it's... Yeah, tank with three sit, we've had a reciprocal, reciprocal. Two so now it's return route, 4009 towards North Stone. Vehicle still going to stop, speed 70 miles an hour. Out on the open road, the robbers start driving like they're in a video game. Oh, look at Jim. Yeah, go on, go on, fine. No, 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 no. Yeah, Tango Big 36, uh, we just uh, currently held in traffic. Uh, still All out of ideas, the driver has another change of heart. Yeah, vehicles uh, just performed a handbrake turn at the Queen's Court Junction. Handbraking straight in front of the cops, the three thieves put some distance between them and Lloydie and Jim. Yeah, Tank Big 36 uh, still uh, temporarily lost uh, weight direction. Hitting a junction with no sight of the fleeing car, a member of the public lends a helping hand. Which way? That way, that way, left, left, left. But the help's too little, too late, as the thieves disappear in the heavy traffic. This time, it looks like the burglars may have got away, but the stolen car is later found abandoned and returned to its lawful owner. Sometimes the deadliest weapons officers face are cars. Staggeringly, the officer's already dealing with one accident when he spots the incoming pickup truck. Rolling three times, the Texan driver survived, but it was never understood why he flipped out. It's Monday afternoon on the Blackbird Lees Estate in Oxford, an area with a history of antagonism towards the police. Charlie Etheridge and Chris Ruff, Ruffy, are backing up two community support officers being abused at the scene of a crash. What's, what's this going on? Basically, well, we've just turned up. Yeah. This gentleman's hit him at the back, hit this gentleman at the back of the car. Yeah. yeah. 
When I tried to take his insurance details and all the documents here, he's saying that he has given me a passport. Right. He's, he's not carrying any documents. He right. doesn't remember his postcode. Okay. So, I mean, he doesn't go and at the same time he's being rude to right. me. Okay, that's fine. It seems the other driver has been rather vague with his details and clearly isn't a fan of the old bill. When did you come to the UK? Because you're born in Jamaica, aren't you? I'm um, I? Am I? You done your wish well? I went, mate. Right, so when did you come to the UK then? A long time ago. Right, how long ago? Years. So you long got enough, four... long, long enough for me to be able to stay here. Right, I'm not asking that, am I? Okay, so you got a full UK licence, yeah. is what I'm asking. Yeah? yeah? Okay. What we're trying to bottom out is that you are who you say you are. I am you're not I'm saying. It's just you know, you're not carrying any ID, fella, so it makes life difficult, doesn't it? A lot of people give false details. They give well, false details all the time. I am not giving a false details because well, all the details I've given now, my, you know what I mean, you've managed to trace back and, you know what I mean, so far... Right, he's just checking your driving licence now, isn't he? It's as simple as that. Eventually, Ruffy confirms the driver's insurance and licence are legit. That chap all checks out, it's fine. You can go? Yeah, you can go. Account. Sorry, insurance, yeah, test goes. Nervous. Nervous. Good. But as the tools let on his way, he's clearly still got a chip on his shoulder. Don't fuck your filming, you wanker. Hey, right, you want to... You want your book? Right, word of advice. Yeah. All right, any more swearing in a public place and you'll find yourself nicked. Hello. Good lad, well done. Good lad, well done, whatever. Yeah? Sorry? All right, if you're going to call me a twat, make sure I can't hear you. Can you move on my way, please? You'll go when I'm ready. Do you understand me? I don't care how you carry on with the local police here. All right? Sorry? Is there anything else you want? No, I'm just giving you words of advice. One more word from you, and you'll find yourself next. Can you give me a word of advice? I won't be called a twat for anybody. Can I get my keys? I'll get on my way then. Yeah, what about? You've told me what you have to tell me. Yeah. Can you give me my key then, mate? Of course you can. Have a pleasant journey. Please watch where you get. I will. Please watch where you're going. I hate to see you crash your car. Hello. I can shut my stuff, mate. Well done. All right, can you look Off it? you go. You got it, haven't you? You got that one down to a T. It's Friday morning in Aylesbury. Every proactive officer is specially trained in rapid entries, so they're often the first to be called in for raids. Happy? Yeah, good. Today, Chris Piggott and Simon Hills hope to give a Class A dealer an early morning wake up. The raid is part of Operation Falcon, Thames Valley's massive crackdown on drugs. Only yesterday, the suspect Chris is after was spotted dealing heroin. But with a history of violence towards police, getting inside quickly is vital. This moment in time, my friend, you're under arrest on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance with intent to supply. You do not have to say anything, but it may arm your defence. If you fail to mention, when question, something which you later rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? With the suspect nicked, Chris is particularly happy. He's been arrested in there. That's particularly nice for me because uh, about four years ago, this bloke uh, got a lump of metal, gouged half my arm out, and uh, tried to take a big uh, chunk out of my leg when I went to arrest him on warrant. Um, so nice and sweet. <laughs> As the bloke's taken off to be processed, Chris and Simon start the search. For crying out loud, boxes and boxes of porn. To be fair, he's got a reasonable porn stash. I've never seen her, Minge. Have a quick look? Be rude not to. Page 47, it's about to be out, isn't it? Yeah, she is. Now, this is all seized from uh, the bedroom drawer. It'll all be drugs related. Uh, the worst of it is, every single one of these banknotes has got a victim attached to it, whether it be a victim of a burglary, a shoplifting, um, you know, a theft of another type of robbery. Even if it's not committed by 
this male in particular is going to be committed by the people who are buying their drugs off him. So um, it seems ironic that every single one of these banknotes has got its own story to tell of, of crime, really. So it's quite satisfying to be um, seizing the money from him. There's some drugs on the bed. Heroin foil from Chasing the Dragon. Homemade bongs. I would say the way he was going on about smashing his mum's place up, there's got to be some more gear in it. Uh, he's kind of hid, look, that's in there. Yeah. He's hid the foil from her. So she knows he does the cannabis, but not the class A. Spoon with some uh, residue on it. Very nice, you wouldn't want to eat your cereal off it. Oh, there's a dead bird in there. There's two, there's two dead blackbirds in there. The search is almost over. There's still no hard evidence of dealing, but Chris isn't giving up. I feel look in the pipe work. Mate. Oh, that, that is why beautiful. you are a policeman. Fucking, fucking have beautiful. It. Have it. Nice. Uh, just pop the top off of the uh, bed here. Found some box shorts wrapped up with a uh, uh, substantial size amount of Class A. Uh, that makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> Mate, that is a quality find. Well done. Being caught with drugs in America is a serious crime. Even a spliff could land you in jail. And this driver in Georgia knows it. Not only is he carrying drugs, he's also just stolen a car after a night of New Year's Eve boozing. The cop decides enough is enough and tries ramming the fleeing car off-road onto a woodland track. After two attempts, the driver still doesn't seem to get the message. Spotting the suspect slowing for a corner, the officer seizes the moment and floors it into his rear end. Finally, a fourth shunt stalls the engine. Spotting the driver desperately trying to start the car, the officer opens fire. But he's not aiming for the suspect, he's trying to blow out the tyres. Incredibly, with no wheels on his wagon, the fugitive gets away. But two hours later, he was picked up and done for the car theft. What a way to start the new year. Even though car crime in Britain has dramatically fallen in the last decade, over a million motors are still stolen every year. In Oxfordshire, the Chiltern Air Support Unit has been called in after a silver car was seen hammering down the hard shoulder of the M40. In fact, the Seat Leon's just been nicked from a motorway service station. Desperate to get away, the driver squeezes past the lorry. Now out on rural roads, the driver picks up speed. But judging by the state of the Seat, he's not going to get much cash for his new motor. Up ahead, officers have set a spiked strip to burst the car's tyres. Spotting the trap, the driver slams on the anchors and goes round the stinger leaving the officer to vainly boot the better nails towards the car. Flooring it round a blind corner, the driver almost smacks into a lorry. After 45 minutes on the run, and now on the wrong side of the road, 
The driver fancies his chances back on the motorway, but instead hits rush hour traffic. Where does he think he's going? Nowhere, as a traffic car heads him off at a pass. With the car disabled, the cops pile in. As they yank out two of the suspects, a third makes a dash for it. While two officers try to grab the lad from one side, he legs it out at a passenger door. Armed with his baton, one cop swings for the bloke. Remarkably, a trucker sees the suspect running towards him and tries to grab the lad. Seconds later, the suspect has second thoughts and is collared by a constable. Police were praised for ending the pursuit before the bandit driver caused even more mayhem on the motorway. It can be a dangerous business dealing with accidents at the side of a road. And no doubt this state trooper in Minnesota will think twice the next time he has to. Amazingly, the woman spots the truck at the last second and dives back in the nick of time. The officer wasn't so lucky as he's dragged down the embankment with the force of the hit. Miraculously, the trooper survived this horrendous crash with just a few bruises. It's late Tuesday evening in Milton Keynes. Chris and Simon are still on Operation Falcon hunting for drug dealers. Intelligence has told them about a white gulf that's linked to the drug trade. Yes, copied. For your information, we are behind that now uh, on the H2 at Greenleys. What's it known for? Dealing drugs at Lloyd's Court. I'm going to put it on this, uh, this main road. Yeah, do it, Dealers often take as long as possible to pull over so they can ditch or even swallow their drugs. Stop, you idiots. And it seems this driver's in no hurry to stop. Oh. Is that you trying to get rid of something? Get the engine off. Yeah, I will do. What's he doing? I don't know. The idea is that you stop when we put the blue lights on. Okay. Can you take your hands away from there, please? Just put that back. Oh. Just take your hands away from it, please, mate. Thank you. Is it your car, sir? Yeah, that's my car. It's your car, is it? Okay. What name's it registered in, please? It's okay. Have you got any identification on you at all? Have you got any identification on you? All right, gents, how are we doing? Not too much. Who's in there? Just the two of you? Yep. Did you not see us behind you? What are you after, mate? Huh? What's, what's your name? Mohammed. Mohammed. Okay, Mohammed. Just step out of the car for me, please, Mohammed. Chris. The driver's not said a word yet, and Simon suspects he may have swallowed drugs. Just get some hey, details. Just step back from in here, my friend, if you want. Yeah, yeah. No, you are. Just come around the back here, mate. I just want to get some details from you. OK. I just want to quickly check your pockets, mate. Make sure you've got nothing in you, all right? You just pop your hands on top of your head for me. It just makes it a lot easier. Mate, 
Right, spit it out of your mouth. Spit it now. Spit it spit out. It. Spit it! Spit it! Spit it! Spit it! Spit it! Spit it! Spit! Hold it as hard as you can, mate. Spit it out! Spit, spit. it out! Spit it out! Spit Do it, it out. out! Spit it out! Take a bit to three one. <laughs> Take a bit to three one. Spit! Chris, I'm losing my grip on him. We need another unit, please. <laughs> Watling Street. Uh, I'll have to get back Spit to the male Spit. Sort of swallow jumps. Spit it out! Spit it out! <laughs> I can't get it because he swallowed it, has he? Well, he's come back into custody. Oh, well, you can come into custody. Stay there. Yeah, very vague description of the moment. I was trying to swallow something like that. I'll get it, mate, because I know where we are. As I got him out of the car, I could see he got something in his mouth, but he swallowed it, unfortunately. Stand facing the car, that's what I asked you to do, wasn't it? Just stand there. I don't overly like you. A search of the passenger reveals no drugs. You got anything down your kegs? No, no, no. But the driver's carrying a large wadge of notes. Going shopping. Back up arrives to take the passenger away for a strip search. This one's been fairly compliant. It's this one we've had the problems with, so we'll sort him out. All right. At last, the driver's finally found his voice. Sitting there, put your feet in. Not my right. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. I'm not hitting you. I haven't hit you. Don't hit me. Don't push me. If I hit you, mate, you would know that I'd hit you. Believe it. Don't tell me what I can and can't do. Shut your mouth. I shut my mouth. Shut up and turn away from me. Cool, you're a bit cheapish for a big boy, aren't you? Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Big drug dealing boy. Oh dear. Back at the neck, things aren't looking good. We've brought them both back. They've both had a negative strip search, uh, although a large amount of cash was found on one of the males. So we've gained good intelligence, but ultimately we know that they had drugs on them. Uh, and it's just so frustrating when they go down that line because um, you know there's, there's little you can do about it other than try and stop them from swallowing the drugs, but at the same time being mindful of their safety. So um, they'll come again. This young lad isn't peddling drugs, he's just peddling pissed. Problem is, he's cycling on a dual carriageway. Roger, could you ring the phone? We've got one uh, on the dual carriageway heading towards the motorway. The Wiltshire Air Support Unit were called after the lad phoned the police to say he was lost. If you ring him, uh, this bloke answers the phone, we've got our man. Yeah, I can't see we're on the but I'll give it a shot. One officer's called him back to say they'd found him. Answering his mobile while cycling proved a bit too much. Where we're speaking to, there's a lot of traffic around. It may well be a molecule carriageway. Your mail's stopped. Uh, Strike one. Yeah, I'm not going to get on and off the bike. He's fallen over into the bushes. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's described as grey. It's grey, it's grey. It's grey, it's Worryingly, every year over 3,000 cyclists are killed or injured on Britain's roads, and doing dopey things like this is an accident just waiting to happen. Delta, we are monitoring the male who has fallen off the uh, bike. He's lying in the uh, verge. I believe a traffic vehicle will be here shortly. Yeah, we're still Tom 99, we're 292. We believe this is the lamb. He said he's just fallen off his bike. Yeah, we've got him then. Uh, it looked like he answered the phone. That's probably why he fell off. Uh, over. A traffic car is soon on the scene. That doesn't seem to bother the tipsy teenager as he tries to pedal off. Safely off the road, the lad was later taken home to sleep off his hangover. Easily able to nip down alleyways, the police know the best way to catch problem bikers is with a chopper. I said we'll take the common tree, still Ashmore Road. Approaching junction with Stockton Road. A left, 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 onto Stockton. 97, uh, left, left, left into Brixham Road, northwards. 
after spotting the Chilton air support, the lad decides to show off his skills. Over 500 motorcyclists are killed on our roads each year, and when it comes to serious injuries, the figure rises to over 5,000. But that doesn't seem to bother this helmetless hoodlum as he heads for open ground. Now made onto the park adjacent to a long barn laid Canterbury Road, right across the park at this time, he's going to come out on Canterbury Road. No correction, he's gone into an alleyway towards Northumberland Avenue. Alleyway towards Northumberland Avenue, yeah, if you've got some people in pandas making this way in case of a decamp, we'll try and contain whatever building it goes into. And left on Barnsdale Road towards Stanhope. Knowing his luck is fast running out, the young rider starts doing laps looking for an escape route. Now Stanhope Road uh, into the cul-de-sac and looking like he's going to go back into Hexham Road. Thinking he can outsmart the air support unit, the lad ditches his bike and attempts to blend in with the crowd. Yeah, 97, uh, he's uh, off the motorbike, Stanhope Road. Uh, we can get that uh, police car into Stanhope Road now. As the police close in on him, he casually saunters off as if he hasn't got a care in the world. That's Ralph 97, you've got a traffic car on a roundabout. Uh, the uh, offender is the other side of that roundabout wearing a blue top, white hooded top, underneath the blue top. Nine seven, the offender is talking to a female with a pushchair. Yeah, traffic officer, yeah, that's the one, you're coming up behind him now. That's your man. Next round for 97, uh, two officers have detained uh, the mail over. Next, this numpty won't be making any bike trips anytime soon. Nor will this biker. Pulling a wheelie for his mates, the lad lands it, but completely fails to notice the stationary pickup truck. Luckily, it was just the bike that needed repairing. Dealing with youngsters who think they can drive has always been a problem for the police. It's rush hour in Reading, and Rosie and Daz have just been alerted to a rather youthful-looking motorist. Yeah, a member of the public called us up to say there was a couple of kids driving a vehicle on one of the main roads in Reading Town Centre, and um, they put out observations for it, and the CCTV people have picked it up. It's somewhere further down the Oxford Road. Um, we put it into the ANPR, and it pretty much did all the noises it's got, the full set, no tax, um, as possibly on a gypsy site, etc. So there's a traffic car that's coming in from the other end, so hopefully we'll pick it up. It's probably going to be around here somewhere. Oh, it's that one there, that blue car there, looking behind the micro. Yeah. Do you want to step out, please? Yeah. Come. Have you got a licence? Yeah. Come out, please. Turn around. Right, just come take a seat in the back of the car, please, mate. Just got to check on your driving licence, etc., because someone's seen you driving erratically in the town. I'll move this out of the way, Dad, if you want to bring it up there. It seems the young motorist isn't being entirely truthful about his details. What name are we giving? Jerry. No. I know you, mate, so don't try and give us stuff details. What's wrong with you? Excuse me. What's, what's what do you mean? What's wrong with me, mate? What's, what's your video on me? Will you speak to us? We've got more important things to be worrying about than the camera. Yeah. No, that's your real name, mate. What's your date of birth, mate? <laughs> That would make him a very youthful looking 18 year old. What's your real name? I'll ring up AIT, Dad, and see if we can get some else. What's your real don't, don't, I asked you a question. What's your real name, okay? Don't tell He's already telling us Porcupine's giving us false details, but uh, I met him about three years ago, so I know he's not who he says he is. What else should they call you? Yeah, that's what 
With the lad giving them the runaround, Rosie makes a quick call to find out his true identity and, more importantly, his real age. Sure, Tango. Tango it to 37. Would you be able to do me an LIO check, please? Do you remember that little um, um, traveller lad that we got in the middle of Wokingham Town Centre with his mum? Little Paddy. I need to know his date of birth because he was driving that Astra that we've just done a stop on on the Oxford Road. No, it was it was um, it was driving like an idiot on the IDR. I think he's only about 14. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's okay. Yeah, can you try see if that comes up as an alias? Yeah, that's definitely the one then. That's good. No, that's it, mate. That's good. That's it. So it's 92. So he's he's 14 then. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks. 14 years Bye. old. Is that better? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. 92. Right, because you've given us a load of um, duff details, and because you're only 14 and driving that car and you're a danger to yourself and other road users, you're under arrest, OK? Back at the Nick, it seems the young lad's more concerned with his looks than his licence. Come and stand here for me. Thank you. Yeah, your hair looks fine, mate, don't worry. <laughs> Stand on the white line for us, please. All right, I'm going to authorise your detention at the police station so we can secure and preserve evidence and, if necessary, obtain evidence by questioning you about the allegations that have been made today. Okay? Whilst you're here, you've got rights and entitlements all outlined on that sheet of paper there. So you've got to take that. Ask you to read in your own time. Can't read. Just step back for us. We can't read. No, we'll, we'll get somebody to come down. Reading was just the start of the 14-year-old's problems as he was banned from driving for a year. Now, if he's spotted behind the wheel again, the court could send him to jail. Young kids at the wheel of motors are just as much of a problem in America as over here. In North Carolina, cops were called in after a teenager was spotted at the wheel of this blue car. Bombing it up the hill, the driver blindly overtakes at the brow with no thought for oncoming cars. An officer knows things are getting dangerous and calls for backup. It seems not everybody was listening. Hurtling through a red light, the driver narrowly misses smacking into another motorist. But the near miss has done nothing to quell the lad's need for speed as he boots it away. It soon backfires though as he takes a corner too fast and jams on the brakes. The near miss may have knocked some sense into him, but then again, maybe not. We'll never know what on earth the teenager was thinking as he bails out while still doing 30. The driver might have come to a stop, but his motor hasn't as it veers off towards oncoming traffic. Luckily, the motor just careers down an embankment. The same couldn't be said for the lad, who smacks his head three times on the road Judging by the state of him, he was lucky to escape with just a few minor cuts and bruises. The police are following another gang of acne-ridden petrolheads. 
On board this old Ford in Scotland are three likely lads refusing to stop. Having blown all the cash on a night on the tiles, they've no money left for a taxi home. Burning through the city centre at over 50, the driver floors it through a red light. Up ahead, they take a shortcut round a roundabout. Speeding through a second red light, the driver almost smashes into a car. He clearly has scant regard for other road users as he clocks nearly 70 on the speedo. No sign of slowing, the driver heads for another set of lights. Definitely not third time lucky, as the driver runs another red light and tonks straight into a taxi. Ironically, it ends up being a green traffic light that finally stops him. On the Blackbird Leeds estate in Oxford, the Chilton Air Support Unit have been called in after a young lad's pinched a motor. Spotting the police car behind him, the driver does one. Luckily, it's half one in the morning and there's nobody on the roads. The cops know in situations like this, it's often safer for the ground units to back off and let the chopper take over. But judging by the bloke's lack of driving skills, it's not going to be a long pursuit. Taking the first exit. First exit, still Grenoble Road towards the uh, stadium. Losing it on the bend, the driver struggles to regain control and smacks into a lamppost. Pegging it into fields, the lad soon nicked and was later given an eight-month stint in a juvenile detention centre. It's after 9pm in Reading. Rosie and Daz have only just finished dealing with the 14-year-old driver. Now the concern the adult that's picked him up also doesn't have a licence. What's happened is we've just um, we just charged the lad that we had earlier on with uh, driving without a licence and insurance. And uh, an appropriate adult came and sort of acted for him, who said she was 18, but she's, she's no trace on the driver licence database, so um, we'll give it a tug and, uh, and see what she says. We meet again. It was saying you're having a laugh, isn't you? <laughs> Have you got an Irish license? No, I've got a license. Where is it? Because I did a check on you to check your identity, and it came up as no trace. What's going on? <laughs> We're just checking her license, mate. What's this about? <laughs> oh no. She's posing. Cheers. Nice car. Nice, isn't it? The driver's license checks out fine, but the same can't be said for the passenger's TV performance. TV tonight. <laughs> she is a bit pissed, isn't she? Yes, I drove two bottles of WKD blue, blue tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that BBC. With like Potter's a bar. Like bar. <laughs> BBC. <laughs> you took my mojo. <laughs> Nice, it was him that took your mojo. 
good night, ladies. Okay. Take Trust care now. Girls, look. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, around. Trust me, I had a few drinks tonight. Yeah, that's all right. You're all right. You're all right. Here, here. Yeah. We don't drive. We're not, we're not no, no, that's all right. No, I just wanted to make sure she had a license. That's a beautiful car, that is. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. See ya. She had some nice. Um, she was had some moves, she had, didn't she? She had a Playboy steering wheel grip on that. Nice. Another classy <laughs> Reading bird. <laughs> Broken down, thought I'd pull over and help you out.